Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, I am a board certified laser dermatologist who does aesthetics, but today we'll be talking about one of the most common conditions around, which is hair loss. Because sooner or later, sooner or later, everyone will experience some form of hair loss. Okay, so the, today we'll be concentrating on um, what we call androgenetic alopecia. In other words, male and female pattern baldness. And like I said, everyone at some stage um, will, will suffer from this. So if you're in your 40s or 50s and you haven't had it yet, uh, if you live to like 80, you're gonna get it. But at 80, if you can pass a bowel motion, that's pretty good, I wouldn't be worrying about hair loss at that age. Anyway, let's get back into it. Hair loss, there's so many conditions that can cause hair loss. And the most important thing, as you know, how I approach hair loss is a diagnosis, yeah? So, as a dermatologist, um, we concentrate on the study of skin, hair, and nails. And within that specialty, uh, there's a specialty of hair loss because there are so many different conditions. There are about six or 700 conditions that can cause hair loss. Everything from, uh, as you females who have given birth know, uh, you can have hair loss postpartum after pregnancy. So that's called telogen effluvium. And does that need to be treated? The answer is no, because uh, three months after you give birth, um, you lose your hair, but six months later, it comes back. So most importantly, it is so vital to actually diagnose um, hair loss, whether it's telogen effluvium, whether it's inflammatory, something like alopecia areata, or whether it's secondary to medications, chemotherapy, or whether it be an inflammatory condition, such as uh, lupus erythematosus, discoid lupus, lichen, lichen planar pilaris, uh, frontal fibrosing alopecia, um, so many conditions of hair loss, okay? Um, and it could be secondary to uh, endocrine conditions as well. Things like Cushing's, thyroid disease, could be a deficiency of vitamins, so things like iron, for example, uh, B12, folate, even zinc. Um, and once again, it's so complex because uh, it's not, I can't cover this in, you know, in, a, in a 10 minute lecture, I'm just covering uh, male and female pattern hair loss, okay? And even then, that is so complex because identifying the type of um, patterning and the treatments, both medical uh, together with surgical and also um, a laser and light base, um, it's a really complex world out there. And just to give you guys an understanding, um, it's a very profitable business. So guys, just watch out for scammers because um, the hair loss industry is 11 billion dollars per year annually okay so that's 11 billion okay um, so and there are a lot of scammers out there because hair loss is traumatic um, when you get it um, you know most patients are traumatized and they'll, they'll do anything to get their hair back right so I'm giving you a guide as to how to approach it the first thing you should do is actually if you can see a dermatologist because like I said some cases like telogen effluvium after you give birth or after major trauma, surgery, um, blood loss, etc. That's self-limiting. Uh, and your dermatologist will say, a good, well, a good dermatologist and an honest dermatologist will say, hey, this is telogen effluvium. You don't need to do anything about it. Your hair will come back in six to nine months. And that's it. But if you're suffering from um, other forms of hair loss, it's super important because, for example, there are conditions, for example, like um, inflammatory uh, skin conditions that can mimic uh, what's known as androgenic alopecia, okay? So uh, a diagnosis is first. And once you've diagnosed um, the dermatologist or your hair specialist, it should be a dermatologist because in my opinion, you've, you've really got to exclude all those conditions, like I said, and, and do those investigations if needed, whether it be a thyroid function test or your iron levels. Um, so your dermatologist will give you a diagnosis and if they exclude all the other conditions, we'll go, hey, you've got male or female pattern hair loss and can go through treatments with you. Now, what treatments are there? Time-tested treatments, for example, minoxidil, yeah? Um, minoxidil can actually increase um, your hair growth, it can reduce the amount of hair loss, it can make your hair thicker, uh, and your antigen levels, in other words, the uh, growth phase longer, and that's how it works. Okay, so minoxidil, um, go for the 5%. Even for females, if you're gonna use it topically, go for the 5%, and obviously put it in the areas guided by a dermatologist, because we rem remember, with hair loss, there are different patterns. In males, you can have the, um, what, what we call the Norwood scale um, of hair loss, 
and that goes from Norwood 1 all the way to Norwood 7 where you have the no hair until you know right at the back over here that's Norwood 7 but very commonly you'll have your bi temporal recession um, and your crown and your vertex and that's uh, Norwood I think Norwood 3A vertex but anyway so be guided by your dermatologist and you'll know as well when you look in the mirror where you're losing hair um, and that's where you put your minoxidil. There's no, there's no point putting minoxidil at the back of your head there because over there, the reason why you don't lose hair over there is because uh, the hair follicles in that area have lower receptors or, or, or DHT, uh, dihydrotestosterone modulation, which means you still keep your hair back here, but most people lose it up there. So time and tested, first of all, minoxidil. That can be taken um, topically, can be used as a foam, um, which is nicer to use, or it can be used as a liquid. Go for the 5%, it doesn't matter what brand. Um, the most famous one is actually Regain or Rogain, uh, but that's off patent now and you can actually buy things for a third the price of what you used to pay. You can also use this um, orally. So this is what I personally use uh, because um, I don't like using this uh, topically, just, uh, just swallow a pill. Uh, and once again, be guided by your dermatologist. Uh, you can buy this from a pharmacy, which I'm not affiliated with, um, down in the links below. So you can start off at um, one milligram, go up to two milligrams, sometimes up to three. Um, and the, so the only side effect with this uh, is um, a little bit of dizziness because this is actually used to decrease your blood pressure. So minoxidil is cost effective, it's effective, it's proven for the last 35 years, um, so it's out there for a long time. Um, other things to consider, and I was this on, I was on this myself for uh, 20 years, and that is to use what's known as DHT um, inhibitors. So I was using finasteride, um, and finasteride one milligram. But what I did, being a Thai last Asian, um, I actually used the five milligram tablets. Uh, that's called Proscar and then broke the five milligram tablets into two and a half milligram tablets and I took one tablet every second day. And I did that for 20 years. Uh, and did it work? The answer is yes. Uh, I don't have a full head of hair, uh, I'm getting my age, you know, it's, it is, yep, thinning up, but uh, it worked and it worked really nice. So now I'm transitioning uh, the last couple of years to, to minoxidil orally. So, Second thing, like I said, if you want to, have a talk to your physician in regards to uh, finasteride. That's one milligrams. Uh, you can go up to two milligrams, not recommended. The other one is called duesteride, which is um, the newer version of finasteride, which inhibits two receptors rather than one. Uh, side effects of that, um, seriously, the most important side effect is, uh, for males, uh, impotence, yes. Yeah? So, um, in studies, it's shown that it hasn't actually increased the, um, the incidence, but as you can see in this story, it can do this. He says the hair loss drug Propecia did more than grow his hair. He says it made him slip into a mental fog, it made him impotent, and even shrank his genitals. Well, it really didn't happen to me, and according to my brother as well, um, it really didn't happen to him when he was taking it as well. Second thing is I've an extraordinarily large penis for an Asian. <laughs> oh no, that, that, that one guys, hey, it's a professional channel here guys, Dr. David Lin, board certified dermatologist, um, I didn't say that, okay, so this is coming from my brother. Sorry, what very, very, hey, mate, Sorry. hey, come on, dude, hey, I've got a reputation here. Okay, so there you go, combining uh, minoxidil, minoxidil together with duesteride or finasteride is the medical treatment. So what other treatments are there for, um, for hair loss? Well, um, you can go for <laughs> over-the-counter um, healthy hair, skin and nails. Does it work? The answer is uh, no. So unless you are deficient, in other words, you're iron deficient, it will not treat androgenic alopecia. So these are all unproven. You can certainly go for things like this, Proparia, and a lot of over-the-counter uh, preparations which promise you thicker, fuller hair. And how it actually work is by decreasing inflammation with niacinamide and also increasing blood flow to your hair follicle using caffeine. So do these work? Uh, the answer is that we really do need more studies to actually find out. Okay, let's go to surgical options. Now, 
Surgical options. Um, everyone goes, which clinic do you go to? What's the best clinic? What's the best branch? It's not that. It's exactly like scar revision. It is the doctor that counts and not the actual clinic branch or robot, okay? Because FUE or follicular unit extractions, it used to be called FUT, follicular unit transplantation, where they actually take a strip of your hair from the back, they dissect it, and it's so important because the people doing the dissection um, must make sure they do not cut the area of the bulge or um, the area which produces the stem cells which gives you your hair, right? So it is so dependent on actually um, the people who's dissecting it and cutting it into uh, follicular units. Now, the follicular units usually are in one, two, threes, and very exceptionally four, right? So these used to be uh, called um, punch excisions, where in the old days they used plugs, use a punch, they punch it out, they put it in, and that's what they call hair plugs. Now we know that hair plugs, uh, unlike the Donald Trump look, is not the way to go, right? So it's the follicular unit extractions. Now is the actual um, surgical technique of choice. And once again, it's dependent on your surgeon, on the people dissecting it, um, and the technique. Because uh, number one, like I said, you cannot actually make a mistake because once you lose, um, and you transact the area of the bulge, that's it. Secondly, you've got to predict what kind of hair loss you have, or what kind of pattern, because a good surgeon would actually predict what your hair loss will be in five or 10 years time. Uh, when they see someone who's in their 40s or 50s, their aim is not to give you a hairline that looks in your 20s, because you look absolutely ridiculous. So the most important thing is your surgeon, okay? Because uh, he will actually draw out the area and figure out how many units you need according to your hair density. And your hair density is also dependent on your race. Because for example, uh, Caucasians uh, with blonde hair may need a high density compared to, for example, um, Asians. For example, we have thicker hair, um, and if we dye our hair, it's a little secret, um, it actually looks fuller as well. So that's another, that's another tip. But um, your surgeon is, is, has to, is critical because he actually implants the hair in the correct place and most importantly, um, he has to be very meticulous with his job um, and place it at the right angle and post-operative care is imperative. So that's considered FUE manually, okay? Now, all of you guys out there would know, can a robot do a better job? So there's something called RTRAS, right? Which is a robotic system. And the robotic system, contrary to what you think, it's not like a, ro a robot comes in and extracts your hair and plants it. It still needs planning and programming by the surgeon. So the robot, all it does is it harvests the hair for you at the back um, and it harvests it and it, it doesn't implant it, but it actually um, provides the, uh, both the donor area together with the recipient area. So it speeds up the job of the surgeon. Now, uh, if we're looking statistically, uh, a robot has a transaction rate, in other words, it cuts the actual hair follicle at around three to 5%, uh, which is the same as what a really good um, manual person who's a pathologist, for example, um, when they're actually cutting out the hair into different units to be implanted, that's their transaction rate, right? Um, in other words, the cut of the area of the bulge. In fact, the really good ones, probably outdo the robot. So robotic hair transplantation uh, is not what you think. It's, it's actually, um, it just saves a little bit of time, uh, but it's still, everything is still surgical, okay? And that gives you a really, really predictable uh, and very good result in the right hands. And like I said, it's not the branch, it's not the clinic, it's the surgeon. It's the person behind it. So do your due diligence, do your research. Um, the most expensive isn't the best. Um, the one who Google ads isn't the best. Um, do, do, do your research, guys, and go into the hair forums and, and, and look at the reviews. Okay, that's the best advice I can give you. Um, now, Two other things I'll consider. Okay, that's three, but no, it's only two. Two other things I'll consider. Last week I did something on PRP. Can PRP work? So platelet-rich plasma, can it work? The answer is yes, but it's gotta be done in a particular way. That's basically, um, it doesn't regrow your hair, so you don't actually spread out new hair. Um, when people show you those photographs, those are not uh, expected photographs like FUE. 
Those are exceptional photographs. So if you're taking a PRP and you're injecting PRP, all it does is it holds back your hair, hair loss. It increases um, your hair thickness, increases your hair density in that area, but it does not grow back new hair in areas which you've lost, okay? And um, it's a lifetime maintenance, it's not one off, okay? So you've got to actually inject it, uh, and then six to eight weeks later, follow up with another injection, and six to eight weeks later, by third injection. Thereafter, um, to this date, the gold standard is maintenance, that's two injections a year for life. And that's on top of taking your medical supplements. So it's not just um, PRP that'll give you hair growth. Uh, um, that's just not gold standard. Um, the third thing I'll, the second thing I'll cover, or right at the end, is uh, low level laser emission devices, or LLLEDs. We use that a lot. Everything from treating acne to treating um, uh, sun damage, solar keratosis. Uh, we use it here light, for example, to speed up recovery. And how it works in hair loss treatment is that it actually uh, increases blood flow, decreases inflammation. So once again, if you go under this light, does it actually give you hair? The answer is no. But can it help adjunctively with all your other medical treatments, uh, including uh, both your post-transplantation uh, um, uh, uh, hair recovery? The answer is yes. Uh, but you've got to use it with um, your, your minoxidil, either topically, either orally, um, your PRP, uh, and all the low-level emission laser devices do to this day is actually supplement that. So guys, I hope that clarifies things for you. Um, don't get scammed. Um, if you walk into a clinic and they go um, straight for your sales pitch, um, it's just walk out of there. Um, you really do need to exclude all the other conditions. And like I said, sometimes it can be so simple as to actually give it time and your hair will come back, especially postpartum after you give birth. Um, and for conditions, common conditions, I'll go through this at a later stage, like alopecia areata, where you just have these discrete areas of hair loss. A simple steroid injection, which takes literally 20 seconds to do, and costs, I don't know, um, cost price maybe 50 cents, um, will actually get your hair back. So just be careful of all those scammers out there, guys, and um, see a dermatologist, get a diagnosis, and you'll be fine. guys. This is much longer than my normal 10-minute um, spiel on the little topic because, like I said, it is a huge topic to cover. Um, it's basically <laughs> one of our textbook chapters, um, and that's hair loss disorders. Uh, even though I'm a laser anesthetic dermatologist, stuff like this you don't forget because it's just the basis of dermatology. Um, you, you never forget this stuff, guys. Um, so that's why it's my, yeah, it's very quick for me to do something like this without even thinking. Okay. I hope you like this. Um, guys, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Um, this is an interactive channel, so chime your thoughts below. Tell us what you think about hair loss. What treatments work for you? Have you been scammed? Uh, have you had a hair transplant? Who's done, who's done it? Um, what are the results? Are you happy? Um, and any natural remedies which you can think which actually do work. Uh, because like I said, I'm a medical dermatologist and a uh, laser dermatologist, uh, not a naturopath. So guys, please subscribe. I'll see you the same place, same time next week. Um, catch you, bye.